Welcome back to Stitch Files with Barrett in America. I'm Brandon. I am Robert Lee, otherwise known as Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise. Yeah. All right. So we are. Our, we're going to continue our Meet Your Sales Rep yes. series. This will be the third edition, and maybe the best. Maybe I've uh, I've been looking forward to getting him on here. Yeah, we had planned it out, and he had some stuff going on. So well, hey stuff yeah and all the other guys suck they don't ever get back to me yeah but anywho we have gary blakeney who covers southern california hawaii new mexico nevada and arizona did i get them all you did okay yeah did i get him gary you did i did i nailed it awesome all right well thanks for coming on the show man yeah man it's good talking to you yep looking forward to it how you been Good. Staying uh, busy. There was a little bit of a dip, I'm going to say, probably two or three weeks ago. I mean, all the um, rumors of recessions and all that kind of stuff have yeah, kind oh, yeah. of, uh, you know, ha- have made people pause a little bit. But it's kind of funny that the uh, the momentum picked right back up last week and this week. So it's uh, it was a little bit of a hiccup, but man, we're back. We're back up to full speed again. Full speed ahead. Yeah, I've been watching the yep. stock market. And it's one day it's up, and you think, oh, this is great. The next day it goes down. Next day it's yeah. up. <clears throat> I don't even look at it. It's better I do. that way. I look at it. Well, because I'm like an ostrich. I put I'm, my I'm getting head into it. Well, the you're ground. probably that's probably the best thing to do is put your head in the sand. I do it about most things. But with all this debt ceiling stuff, who knows? I haven't heard any news about the debt ceiling. I haven't heard any news. Period. Period. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> All right, so Gary, just uh, give us kind of a brief introduction. Start with birth to present time. <laughs> okay, from there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll start with. Uh, I'm coming up on my 33rd year uh, with uh, representing Barrett and Machines. I started with McPherson Meistergram back on June 18th of 1990. Wow, um, that is coming so, up. Yeah, it's coming up pretty darn quick. So. Um, and then uh, Barrett took over direct sales. I think was it pretty much January of 2000, if I'm not wrong, um, when everybody kind of transitioned over to working with Barrett and Direct. Um, and I came over, um, had a good friend of mine um, from San Diego, that his m- mother grew up with Neil McPherson, I believe, and knew of them in England. And uh, when when Neil opened up um, the Greensboro office, um, they hired my friend to go work in the parts department back in uh, Greensboro. And then he worked his way up through parts. And when they opened up the West Coast sales office in uh, Costa Mesa, um, Brady Gross is his name. Uh, Brady Gross uh, took the job and uh, was uh, kind of one of the first salespeople to represent Barrett out here on the West Coast. And uh, there was an opening for sales and he uh, asked me if I wanted to interview and I did. And um, um, I ended up getting the job and went to work back in 1990, moved from San Diego up to Orange County. I think, uh, um, I think you, Vinny, <coughs> Eccarino and me are the last of the McPherson people. That might, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so direct, direct employees, right. you know, Danes, you know, the, you know, and uh, Elias, they're yeah. distributors. But right. as far as direct employees, I think it's just us. Man, I hadn't thought about that, but I think you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Murph, Murph retired. Um, yep. Gosh, who else? Um, well, uh-huh. we had Cerullo up there for a while. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, we had Valentino up in the Northwest. Um, a couple of people that came, you know, came through, passed through, but yeah, that's, I guess you're right. Man. Yeah. But, <laughs> is that depress? Is that depress you, or is that? Uh, it is. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I, yeah, I guess. It gives uh, you a very stark sense of mortality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, well, it's, About time to hang it up, know. Gary. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm getting ready to because I'm sitting here thinking, you know what? I gotta go fill out uh, my Medicare application here real quick. So. Uh, hey, man, I get those in the mail all the time, and I'm. Yeah. I got a. I got a little ways to go. <laughs> <clears throat> mine's yeah, mine's mine's coming up here in July. 
God. July, yeah, see, mine's June, June uh, 25th. I, no, actually, I've, I've already got my number and all that. It's, it's, that's, that's, a, that's a rude slap in the face when they're sending me stuff like, you now need to sign up for Medicare oh, Part yeah. B. They start sending you uh, applications for power wheelchairs. <laughs> 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 yeah, but the bad thing about it is you start looking water. at them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, well, yeah, if I bought yeah. this one, I, I, that candy apple red looks pretty good. There's one you can take to the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, but anyhow, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the history. It goes back quite a way. We've got stories that would um, curl your hair, I think. Yeah, um, we'll just leave those. You know. <laughs> we'll leave those yeah, in the box. We have. We had a lot of fun. We used to do quite a few trade shows. Um, we had some big trade shows where we'd go back through the Bob and Show in Atlanta, and that was always worth a heck of a lot of laughs and stories that were living into me. Um, but yeah, yeah, you, had, you have to take some of those to the grave run. with you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we've all we all swore the oath, so we'll have to that's see. right. Take well, take just a, it's it, it's it's amazing or maybe depressing how young we were. Yeah, I was oh, in my, my I was in my thirties when I was, when I started here. Yeah, that's. Yep, yep. I mean, that's that's just crazy to stop and think about it. And <clears throat> I've got a box here of some old pictures from a Bob and Show back in, golly, I don't know when ninety <clears throat> three ninety four. How old is that picture yeah. that's up uh, on top of that? I'll have to show you later. Never mind. It's got everybody in it with the salespeople in mm-hmm. it. That that was ninety seven ninety eight, I think. Man. There's there's a lot of those people that aren't here anymore. Uh yeah. Some of them are dead. Like eighty <laughs> percent of those people are gone. Yeah. But I hear I, I hear the leaf blower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gary, Gary's outside blowing leaves. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it's it, it, it's it's my wife getting the she's gonna do the mirth today. I don't know if you've heard heard yeah, of that. That's the, the uh, yeah, yeah, that's the run and uh what is it a I can't remember. I've done it one time when I was in much better shape. I think it's a mile at the beginning, a mile at the end. Mm-hmm. In between, you got to do two hundred push-ups, a hundred pull-ups, yeah, and then and so, burpees some maybe. Other, I don't know or something. Yeah. yeah, and she did she did the trial run, did a half murph last Friday, and then today their gym. Normally they do it on Memorial Day, but yeah, a lot so. of people like to do stuff on Monday. Um, she, their, their gym does it on Friday. So she was literally backing out of the driveway right now. So that was the garage door. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that <laughs> sounds like a leaf she, <clears throat> She's, yeah, she's backing out and, and well, good for her. You're, good luck. You're not going to do it. Uh, no, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. If I can't put a golf club in one hand and a cigar in the other, um, yeah. I'm not too interested. So, well, speaking of like health, I'd, and this is not an offense to you at all. Like, I didn't know that you were as old as you were. Like, you look old. Yeah. I mean that as a compliment. Like, you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Bob, Bob, you still got pictures of us with our hair, right? Is that, I do. The Bob I, I, I do. Okay, I, I need to, you know, the next time we have a sales meeting, I need to bring, I can't remember That's where this hilarious. box of pictures came from. I think, I think I found them when I cleaned out the office in Greensboro. Mm-hmm. You know, I was the last person in that office. <clears throat> and no, all no that way. all that stuff, you know, I threw away a lot of stuff, but I found this box of pictures with there's people in there that I guarantee you've forgotten about cuz I I know I oh, yeah. I'd forgotten oh, about yeah. them, but wow. I mean, you know, Jay Bum, Jerry Lee. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, wow. Peter McDivitt. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. My goodness, we got right. About him too. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's yeah, there's some really really old, uh Jeff Hickman. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And man, we oh, all we were goodness. all so so young looking. It just, it's crazy. Yeah, and I had hair then, too. You could take those That'd to the next crazy. sales meeting. <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to. Yeah, I'd, bring I'd some uh, pictures of me in my diaper. Yeah. From yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> that would work. <laughs> would that work? Yeah. Hey, you think they'll ever have another bobbin show? Wow. I mean, if, if the industry, and, you know, because obviously sales have been really strong for us in the past, you know, uh, what, three, four years. Um I, I, well, that's hard. To, it's hard to say. I I would love to see it because right now it's pretty much come down to impressions, trade mm-hmm. shows, and yeah. a couple other small shows. Um, obviously, Long Beach Impressions is is I think you know the best show that probably attend you know uh, nationwide. No, it, it is. But, it's um, the best stitching show for sure. Yeah, I mean, if people because we lost our cut and sew industry yep. back in during the NAFTA times and. Um, um, 
that was probably a big driver for the bobbin show, right? Because they had everything it took to make a garment from zippers, buttons, you know, brewing machines, sewing machines, and all that. Um, yeah, that would be a nice trend if we see it come back again. Um, yeah, I don't think um, I don't. Seen the, I don't think it will. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think it will. But it'd be yeah. it'd be a note. It'd be a, a pretty good sign that things are pretty healthy here as far as U.S. manufacturing for apparel again. I was uh, in Osaka back in November. <clears throat> and th they had that jime show, which is like a big bobbin show, and yeah. it was mainly cut and sew stuff. You know, there was yep. a, <clears throat> you know, there was Barrett into Jima. Happy was there. I think uh, a few other brands from China I had never heard of were there. There's a lot right. of those. But the cut the cut and sew industry is big, of course, in the, in Asia. Yep. It's not here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no, but they have, right. you know, they have networking for sewing machines, which I thought was kind of mm -hmm. funny. But then once I thought about it, I'm like, well, it does kind of make sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Downtown LA used to be, you know, um, covered with cut and sew shops all over the place. Are they doing and, any uh, manufacturing there now? A little bit. So I've seen some breaths of life because it literally came down to where, like, if, if you could find a cut and sew shop to do a project for you, you know, that would be like a you know um like like a hidden gem that you just pulled out of the ground but it used to be you know prolific and then of course you know the, I, nafta that we talked about pretty much yeah. shut that all down and uh so we're seeing little i guess green shoots um every now and then i see uh with companies starting up with stuff but um yeah for the most part it's 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 gone away that's crazy yeah it's crazy yeah we back in the day boy it was it was it was fun, but you know the numbers that we're doing now. I didn't know if we'd ever see those numbers again. You know when the you know the industry kind of was going through its um, doldrums through the late '90s into the mid mid 2000s. You know the cut dips and dives that we had, but um, right now it's very encouraging. So what do you um, you think it's going to stay like that for a while? Just you know, just your personal opinion. I mean, I, I mean, none of us know. I mean, you know, business is really good now, but you know, when you've been here a long time, like you just said, the the ups and downs. I mean, we've seen it really, really bad and really, really good. And I don't, I yeah, don't like absolutely. the really, really bad. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it's it's. I mean, yeah, there were there were um, really some deep, deep dives. Um, I would like to think, and you know what, it really comes down to, you know political leadership and you know trade agreements and all that kind of stuff that's supposedly they're watching out for our best interest but i think with that you know, we found out maybe that they weren't quite so much but um if if we can i think people are gearing up for more just in time and i don't see i don't see the delivery with the um you know um supply chain like it used to be from you know china um i think it was like pretty much six weeks you could probably get um, product and people were okay with that and you know, the pricing was good, but I think that kind of has dried up right now. Um, thus, I think uh, that's, you know, why we're seeing an increase of business, a lot of six at eight heads and, you know, a few 12s and 15s now again. So, um, yeah, I'd like to see it continue, obviously, as I kind of glide into my retirement. Um, it'd be nice to go out with a bang instead of a thud, but, um, <laughs> yeah, that, <it'd> be, <laughs> that's you know, it's maybe I don't think it's hopeful thinking, but I, I do. I, I'm encouraged. You know, um, let's get through whatever they're going to get through right now. That they're, you know, you know all this doom and gloom that they're threatening right now, um, and we get get on the other side of that. Things things could be surprisingly good. I think. Have you um, have you seen a lot of customers that are hesitant uh, to pull the trigger on stuff? You kind of touched on it a little bit at the beginning, but. Yeah, we did a, a, a little, um, and you know, I've had a couple of customers that have, you know, with our lo longer lead times, mm -hmm. um, and then you know, things change from when they place the order and six months, seven months later, right. you know, um, things might be different. So I've had a couple of customers that were thinking of canceling, but I said, you, you know, basically your name's on the stock list. We can have the flexibility to move you down until you're, you know, ready. Let's see how things are in the next month or two, and and they're happy to do that, you know. So um, we've done that. The the stock list gets a little bit more fluid at that point, but um, 
yeah, they seem to be hanging in there. Some have put, um, I don't know if I've really had maybe just a, a couple of, of, of outright just cancel the order. Yeah. Um, but yes, knock on wood, that hasn't, that hasn't, um, you know, been much of a, an issue. But yeah, people have been a little hesitant, uh, a few. And then there are the other ones. There's like, how soon can I get a machine? This is right. more the majority of, you know, what's your lead time? And, you know, our lead times are much better. They are Absolutely. now than they were yeah. a year ago. My God. Yeah. It was you cool. know, um, our, our customers, <laughs> we are so blessed to have our customers, um, you know, to be so confident in our equipment to place an order and wait nine months. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was unheard of. Um, you know, back when we started, Bob, you know, we were usually in stock and maybe on the outside 60 days you know, right. on something. Um, and then we got, you know, spoiled, of course. And then the next thing we know, we're looking at nine month, 10 month lead time um, last year, right? Wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, on some machines. So, yeah. It... Yeah. Remember, it got like I, ISS Long Beach show 2022 was the first one after COVID, right? Um, yes. Yeah, because yes, so we yes, did twenty twenty two. Yeah, I remember people taking orders. You know, we were taking orders from that show, and you know, we were thinking we were going to have a five month lead time on, let's say, some six head models, and it ended up being October. Yeah. You know, when, when it actually happened, because we had a few hiccups too with our you know, ability to get some parts and like electronics and all that. But yeah. Um, yeah, you yeah, said it too. Know, just uh, having okay. customers that are accepting of that and understanding and being yeah. flexible i mean that's a that says a lot because <laughs> it is you know we're, we're all just kind of guessing i mean you can take a look at the stock list and be like well we think it's going to be this but you're just yeah throwing a ball yeah. at a moving target uh, the ports though they were so confusing. absolutely i mean yeah. it wasn't only supply chain issues that was and this the supply chain issues kind of caught up to us later not yeah, right at the beginning. It was the ports that were just absolutely yeah, killing yeah. us. I mean, we had we had containers that sat out there for two stuff or three getting months. lost. Yeah, containers that they you know that they couldn't find. Yeah. I mean, they finally did. Yeah, but yeah, I saw a um, yeah I saw I saw a, a, a video of the the ports here a couple of weeks ago, and it's like there's nothing going on. Yeah, here. like yeah. nothing ever happened here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't yeah. know. It, it's tough. I mean, <clears throat> you know. We've been through a couple dock worker strikes over the years, you know, for a couple of weeks or three weeks. But man, this was this was crazy. Yeah, it was. It was uh, like a, a new dose of reality, I guess. Um, and it was it came on fast, right? It went from almost like um, you know somebody turned the light switch off all of a sudden. It was like wow, you know, could hardly see it coming. And then all of a sudden, boom, we were in a you know, a long lead time situation. So anyhow, like I said, we are very blessed uh, that we have customers that are very loyal to us. And uh, I appreciate that immensely. Yeah, yeah I, I do too. Class. I mean, it was, it was frustrating for us because a customer wanted to know when they could get their machine and we, we didn't even know where the containers were. Yeah. Or the, or, or it, it was, it was frustrating trying to figure out where stuff was. And, and I mean, yeah. I was looking at the, the containers and the ships out in the Pacific <laughs> every day, 10 times a day. And you just couldn't make any, just because a ship was there and got unloaded didn't mean the container was going to get on a train. Right. It, it was, I don't know. I never want to see that again. That was some of the most stressful times I've ever been through with this company. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, what do you do? Yeah, I mean, it's, I understand customers are frustrated, but. The honesty too. Just it wasn't just us. Though, it was any, customers any, important and, you know, just. Tell yeah. Them, hey, this is what we're dealing with, and bear with us. Yeah, some of those boats yeah. sat out there for three or four weeks before they. Even yeah, and too. If they, you know, if they didn't, like, didn't they have times they had to be in there to unload? If they miss that, they have to turn around and go back to the end. Back and, in the queue. Yeah, I mean, it's insane. Yeah, but we are in <clears throat> a better position now. Um, there's only a few models now that I think are out to probably five months, so it's been cut in half. Um, and single heads are in pretty good situation right now, which is yeah. Good. They're they're uh, coming in they're coming in quicker. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's just you know Japan is behind the eight ball in manufacturing, um, mm -hmm. just because we have so many they have so many to build. Right. That's that's the thing, yeah. and and we keep adding to the list, so it's not like everything stops and you get caught up. It it, it just, and I don't want that to happen. I mean, I hate for customers to have to wait, 
but yeah, but yeah, it's it's gotten a lot better. Now, and they've concentrated on sixes and single edge too, mm-hmm. because that that's where they've put most of their efforts toward. Yeah, it's our fast movers for sure. Because we got to have those, you know, to stay in business, and and they know that. Yeah. So, I, they've they've done a really good job, a much better job, <clears throat> you know, procuring. You know, parts and components. How would you like to be in sixes? charge of that? How no, that, I mean, that's, no, it's very frustrating. Yeah, that's. Cool. I, I and I know Japan has been extremely frustrated. I see it in their emails, and you know, you know, they are so apologetic when they, oh, we're so sorry, but you know, you know, we're we can't find our vendor for our touch screens is mm-hmm. you know backlogged, and and I will tell you, you know, they probably could have outsourced this stuff to China mm-hmm. to get it cheaper. Which would have been poor quality, right. but you know they 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 stuck with the the good stuff, you know the name brand stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm thankful for that. I yeah. I mean, you could have seen all kinds of problems if they'd have gone that route. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you know Barrett and yeah, I like that we don't cut corners <coughs> and um, we we would stick to the quality equation instead of going for a cheaper uh, or more readily available option. Um, you know, it speaks a lot to. Know how the machines are manufactured and, and the quality of the components that go into our equipment. And, um, again, that's why our customers are willing to wait in line for them. That you know the people that know our machines and have experience with them. Yeah, um, yeah, we we appreciate the loyalty. So, um, what kind of changes you see? What do you see in the industry? What do you think? Any kind of changes that you see coming along? As far as yeah, equipment, I mean, or you know, the way that folks are doing, that that are are doing embroidery, order sizes, and any of that stuff. What do you what do you see when you talk to your customers? Yeah, I, I'm seeing a little bit of a return. Believe it or not, out here in the LA market, you know, um, you know, most people you would think would say, "No, we're just doing left chest logo sleeve hits and hats." You know, nothing big, but you know, I've got customers that insist on getting the big 460 by 434 hoop mm-hmm. because they're doing larger, larger designs. Um, and you know that because uh, you'll see some orders come to them. It's like, yeah, you know, these guys are looking to get that. Um, and that that surprises me because it kind of goes against um, the trend, but there's enough of that uh, demand, I guess, out there for these customers that are um, they're getting the bigger, larger hoops. Um, I don't see many. 15 heads in my territory like we did you know back in the early 90s right mid 90s um la you know is pretty much the biggest bulk of my sales in my territory would be you know southern california um and it's more specifically you know los angeles say you know uh riverside county um and la county um but uh yeah i don't see many 15 heads um but i do see a lot of sixes and eights um, and you know, hats, you know, headwear is, is really big and, um, you know, they, the word is kind of out in the industry The uh, you know, the Baradins kind of become the sought after machine for, for doing headwear, especially 3d puff. Right. Um, you know, we've always been known for good high quality detail on small lettering. Um, uh, but now they're coming to us for, um, you know, headwear needs, which is great didn't used to be that way so it's great what about the single head market yep. where do you where do you see there uh, do you see as many startups yeah. as you did yeah that's what i was going to ask yeah I, I still have some startups but not that many so yeah i uh, was just looking at my uh, my sales and the pro three sales are, are not as um, brisk as like let's say six head you know sales um my biggest single head uh, customer you know would be like figs um uh, and and they uh you know matched by another company that's coming along kind of a left right competitor to them mm-hmm. you know, a bunch of single head machines but um uh, i'll be honest you know and people will tell you uh california doesn't make it easy for people to run a business <laughs> you know uh it, it's with regulations and taxes and cost of doing business but um uh, there's people that are you know adding and expanding so uh, knock on wood, you know, that they don't chase everybody out of California. Yeah, I, I think the single head market too, startups, uh, that's, startups are tough. And, and what I mean by that is it's, you know, they, they don't know what to buy. Um, most of them, I'm not going to say most of them, probably half of them are really price conscious. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which I, in the end hurts them, I, I think. 
Well, I don't think so. I know it does. Um, you'll, you'll have one, one buyer that's just going after the cheapest thing that they can get, which is not going to be us. Um, and yeah. then, you know, they suffer quality issues yeah. and they laid this money out for a machine that's not going to do what they wanted to do or what they expected it to do. Uh-huh. Um, it's the single head market is just very, very difficult. I, I wish, you know, us, us being with Baird and it's kind of, and I, I know we're honest with people, you know, we, whether they buy from us or not, we tell them the truth. We don't bash yep. anybody, but <clears throat> some of the decisions I see these new folks make, I, I, you know, it's not that I'm mad at them for buying something else. I, I, I never get mad at them for that. I always say, you know, Sooner or later, you'll buy Bearden. Uh, that's the way I look at yeah. it. But you just yeah. want to shake them and say, ah. Uh. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're in, you know, we're in, an, uh, um, we're salespeople. You know, we're not the most, mm-hmm. well, I think we're right below politicians, maybe. <laughs> or maybe above politicians, one notch. But, <laughs> you know, they don't, and they go to a show, they hear all, all this stuff. Everybody's telling them, telling them they're the best. And yeah. you know the stuff we hear. It, it gets very frustrating. You, you, you mm-hmm. I see customers that are, you root for them to do well, and, and you're like, man, I'd like to have them as a customer mm-hmm. because I know they would do really well. And yep. they end up saying, well, I bought this over here because it was like $5,000 cheaper. Yeah. Um, and 0% interest on finance. Yeah, yeah. There's right. no and such then, thing as 0%. Right. There's no, no such doesn't thing. doesn't exist. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah. You I've, pay for it somewhere. Thank, I've said so. that a million times. Dude, there is nothing on this earth that's free. Yeah. Except yep. oxygen. Yep. That is a probably a several times a week. I'm like, well, this yeah. has 0% finance. I'm like, well, does it really? Because <laughs> yeah. that yeah. doesn't work out. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody lends out money for no yeah. cost. No. Uh, but yeah, we do, we do lose, um, those customers, um, initially. Um, and we've always said it, I think that the more, uh, homework you do, the deeper you look, the more we become kind of a, a obvious solution. Um, you know, the more people you talk to in the industry, but there's some people that do get caught up in, you know, um, in some of those little trigger, uh, things that, you know, are going to make them happy thinking they're not paying any interest, but you know, the machine might not be exactly what uh, is going to make them successful um, or, or as successful as they want to be. So um, if they make it through that, um, then we do, you know, as you see, Bob and um, Brandon, you know, that we do get a lot of those customers that do come to us and, yeah. um, at our trade show. And they usually have a little bit of a look on their face and they're kind of shaking their heads and you ask them if you can help them. And they, you know, ask them if they had a machine and they say, yeah, they already do. And you ask them what brand. And they're looking at our machine and they're shaking their heads like, why doesn't this thing break threads all the time? <laughs> well, how does this quality so good? You know what I mean? Um, but yeah. yeah, those are the things that we try to show them early on, but it might have got buried under a lot of the other glitz, smoke glass and mirrors, you know, that they see. So Yeah, there's been um, there's been quite a few of those conversations at trade shows. Folks come by and like, well, I can't do this on my machine. And, you yeah. know, it's it's a tough conversation to have to have, but Char- to Charlotte was really, yeah, bad. Very, I, very I, bad. I've never seen as many people, yeah. Brandon and I did the Charlotte show last month. Yeah. And I'm mm-hmm. telling you, at least half the people that came to our booth had bought brand X based on their marketing and their price yep. and the 0% interest. And I, you know, I'm yep. not going to mention any names. And then to a man and to a woman, they would come to us and say, my machine will not do this. Yeah. And and how come Correct. you guys don't have thread breaks? And one, yep. one guy said, uh, well, you guys have these set up specially. I'm like, they literally, <laughs> they rode in a trailer <laughs> and we unloaded them yeah, and they, pushed to start. They came up, they came across country. We took them out of a crate, set them up on a trade show one day and, you know, on the floor one day. I mean, hit, yeah. hit run <clears throat> the next day. Brandon and I set them up. We're not technicians. God and we set them up. Yeah you know, rewound the cone, the thread on the cone, put our designs in there and hooked them up and sewed them. And that's the honest truth. There's no smoke and mirrors. And And it was so much, you know, we were doing the small lettering and we're very concerned that we didn't bring those needles for that and never broke a needle. (laughs) Oh yeah. What happened, what happened was, um, some dummy by the name of Robert Lee, (laughs) 
I didn't have any, uh, the number nine needles. I told oh. Brandon, I said, dude, I don't have any number nine needles. I got all uh, 1175s. And this design had six number nine needles in there. Yep. And I said, if this thing breaks a needle, we'll have to Dead in the water. <laughs> it, I, it, there wasn't a, it, it didn't do anything. It but so it sewed the whole show. Yep. I, I, I probably five thread breaks the whole show, and people were mesmerized with it. Well, you know, just watching it, <clears throat> and I'm like, well, I guess we didn't need them. Yeah, yeah. So that's amazing. I mean, that's a you know that's a test of the quality of the machines. But you know, I, you know, again, back to the new people and people are just getting into the industry. I, it's 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 just really hard to get to these people sometimes when. Um, but then again, there's enough info out there on the internet that you know you can really you can really find out the truth. Yeah, mo- most enough. people will end up saying, "Well, you know, I've I've done my research and I hear these it's usually two brands at the top, mm-hmm. and yep. one of them's us." Yeah, and I yep. say, "Well, that tells you what you need to know." And then you know that they're, they're trying to do their due diligence and do the research, and you know, price is a motivating thing for a lot of people and you know it might, it's going to end up being a mistake in the end mm-hmm. well i gotta tell you where we're positioned um i obviously i think our value is through the roof um with our equipment and the way they produce um how productive they are and the quality and reliability that you get out of our equipment i gotta tell you it's been 33 years of uh pleasure um selling the equipment to our customers and um you know of course nothing's a hundred percent you know, it's being manufactured or whatever, but Meriden always does a great job of standing behind our machines and our warranty. And, uh, you know, I always tell my customers or people that are looking to buy from me, you know, I said, you know, I see people at trade shows, I'm not having to run and hide. Um, you know, I'm greeting them with a handshake or a hug and, um, you know, talking about the next machine. So it's been a really good um, fit. Um, I'm glad I, I, I found Meriden and, and vice versa, I hope. But um, yeah, it's been it's been 33 great years and a uh, lot of really amazing customers that we have. Different stories, you know. I love I love that part. You know, somebody that had a, a home machine that ended up buying the first commercial machine. Next, you know, you know they have two eight heads, a six head, and you know, expanding their business into the next building next to them. You know? Yeah, um, you know, we have a lot of that, and uh, yeah, that that's made the uh, very fulfilling um, part of my career would be you know just being able to work with customers like that and watch them succeed. Um, yeah. I think, I think that's the best part of part of this job too is, is well, there's, it is the customers. I mean, you know, you, you just brought up a good point. We don't have to run and hide from anybody. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it, it, it's very rare. Somebody is, is irate with us. And if they are, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of it. Um, but you know, you go to shows and, and we don't have people coming up saying, well, you sold me a piece of junk or, you know, your, your equipment sucks. Um, it's, that's, I don't think everybody can say that. Um, no, no, not at all. In, in this industry. And I'm, I'm not saying there's a bunch of bad players because there's not. Yeah. I mean, there's some really good yeah. equipment out there. I, I know that we yeah. manufacture and sell the best and there's some other good stuff out there, but there's, there's a lot of yep. junk out there too. There is. And that, you know, unfortunately that kind of gives a, I don't want to say a black eye to our industry, but it does put a little bit of a, a cloud over us. And then the people that kind of are managed to make it through the, you know, maybe if they bought the wrong piece of equipment that they found out and, you know, if they survive and come back through and um, are able to make a change. In other words, it didn't financially devastate them. Um, I, I think those are the customers that really appreciate the burden even more. Right. Um, so, because they, they know how, how how bad it could be. And, you know, when they get a machine, they, they can hit start and, you know, walk away and come back and something's finished on it. It's, you know, a different experience for them. Well, it amazes me how many old Bairdens are out there. I mean, here lately, I don't, I don't, I don't know. We've <laughs> yeah. gotten a run on, I don't, I can't believe how many N-Series yep. are still out yep. there running every single day. And yep. You know, it's getting hard for us to support that machine. There's there aren't any, aren't any boards yep. for it. You know, electronically, yep. that's 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 a tough one. But man, people don't give them yeah. up. They will not give them yeah. up. Yeah, you know, you you hit the point where the machines are getting old because we're trying to network them now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Like, you well, know, you can't. <laughs> that machine's like, like what does that mean? Twenty year old machine. <laughs> they yeah. didn't even know about networking back then. No, um, 
Brandon, that's, Brandon, that's when you kind of realize there's a lot out there. Brandon came to me earlier this week, or maybe it was last week. He said, this guy's wanting to sell this machine, and he says, it's an N-series. I said, well, what is it? You remember the narrow forehead that we made for just a very short time? That little 380 yeah. machine? Remember that? Yeah. Brandon's yeah, got, yeah. yeah. got a customer. And that machine looked it, ru- he, it runs new. like a tank. He runs caps on it. Yes, yes he does. Yeah. I'm like, that machine, Gary, was a 2000. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Twenty, it's twenty three yep. years old, and it's still. Years old. Oh, I thought I turned that off. Yep. You twenty three years old, and it still it still runs every day. Yeah, and he he's, he had some really good pictures of it. <clears throat> and I'm like, that that machine looks like it just rolled off the shelf. Yeah, I mean it is immaculate, and he's like, I just have to get rid of it to put this six head in here. Yeah. I said, all righty, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> put it in the museum. Yeah, so. Um, Trends, I know we were talking about that. Um, I, I, I do see people looking, you know, always, everybody's trying to do multimedia a little bit more. You know, yeah. I, I, in fact, I need to talk to you about uh, our chenille and maybe combo machines. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we see more of those, um, you know, in you know Brazil or the Asian market um, and whatnot, not much in the U.S., but um, maybe, you know, I don't know if we... I don't think it's going to be, you know, a, a huge, huge burst of business. But, you know, maybe that might be something that we see more of. Um, <clears throat> that has been a, that, That'd be nice. Yeah, well, that's been a, I mean, it is more and more of a conversation that I have with customers because, you know, they're thinking about Chenille and, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's tough. That's a pricey machine. <laughs> Yeah, it's pricey. Yeah, yeah. that's what that's what hurts that machine. Yep. It just it's 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 so expensive. But I, I will tell you that I I do think Chenille is an untapped market because um, there's nobody yep. doing it, nobody. Um, Other it, than even, in Texas, right? In Texas, of, yeah, yeah, those, yeah, yeah. Yep. You got you got you got really three main players in the U.S. doing it, and I I don't. Man, you know, I go everywhere. I rarely see a chenille machine. I can't remember the last yep. time I walked into a shop and saw a chenille machine of any brand. Not, yep. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. and you know, at that I guess that's why th- these bigger chenille companies are just killing it. I mean, yeah, they are. You know, we got the one customer down there in Texas. They buy two or three a year, uh, and just keep adding. And yep, they 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 kind of got the market cornered. Um, but, you know, chenille, if you're an embroiderer and you, and you look at chenille, it's just everything you know about embroidery is just exactly backwards yeah. with chenille, yeah. you know, as far as yeah, digitizing exactly. and everything else. I mean, it sews from the bottom. There's no. Yeah, there's no, you're no, making a rug. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what you're yeah. doing. That's so what you're Shag doing. Shag carpeting. The, the digita- digitizing for it is, it, there's not that many. That's the other thing that hurts it. There's yeah, you got a lot of people digitize that can for digitize for chenille and do it well. Um, yep. And then, uh, you, I, Invariably, every week somebody will call and say, "Well, you know, can I, can I, can I do it directly onto the garment?" And, well, can you? Well, you probably could. Do you want to? No, no, that's not the no. way you do chenille. It's like doing patches. Yeah. But any, anyway, it's it, people see it and they want to do it until they learn the cost. That yeah, the, and the and the process. The process is completely and the process different. too. You know, yeah. it's, it's just it's yeah. kind of hard to for an embroiderer that's been doing it a long time. It's kind of hard for them to understand it. Um, yeah, I, I would like to see more people getting into it. Yeah, me too. But I would too. I would too. It's 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 just a tough one, you know. You, there's not a whole lot of people in the U.S. that know a whole lot about it, really. Yeah. But so, I don't know. Maybe maybe that can change. Um, yeah, that's one thing I've been thinking. That I know what would be the the trigger that would make that happen. But it, you know, we have those conversations with people who are very very interested, and then. Um, Usually, you know, the process, like you said, and the cost of the equipment, you know. Well, that machine is so big, too. It won't. It will not go through a 32-inch oh, yeah, door. Yeah. That's, that's the that's thing. True. People that's start true. talking about yeah. this machine, and you know, then you tell them what the dimensions are. They're like, holy cow, I was wanting to put it, you know, maybe put it in my house. I'm like, you're not putting this in your house. It is your house. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's the yeah. other thing. And, you know, we, we know that machine's expensive, but when, when you look at what you get with that machine in the sewing field and just how yeah. the heft of it. Yeah, I, I I don't know if you can. I mean, you know, the folks down in Dallas are, have been. They got machine, you know, machines in there that are 
16, 17, 18 years old, they just still run every day in production. And yeah, absolutely. it's not like they're replacing machines down there. They're adding machines. Yeah. So, yep. and it really hasn't changed much. That sewing head hasn't changed hardly any. That chenille sewing yep. head. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just, I sit back and look at embroidery and I look at, uh, you know, just like you said, um, it's not only left chest and caps anymore. There's, we get a lot of calls for patches. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but mm-hmm. patches are getting to be a big thing. Um, yep. I, I, I see the market, especially on hats. People like to sew a patch and then put yep. it on the hat. Um, speaking yep. of, speaking of, you have one on, right? Sure right do. Now. But what do you think about equipment? You, you see any changes in equipment? What do you, I mean, you know, some of our competitors have a lot of automatic stuff out there and I'm not a huge fan of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I don't know how, how much, um, so <laughs> You know how we don't like to bad mouth. Or, Be and, careful. And <laughs> yeah, I know. I just, but I'll just say I did have a customer that we had, the, you know, back when we had the longer lead time, uh, like a six head machine, uh, had to have a machine. He couldn't wait and had to go to Brand X that had a lot of um, um, automatic features on it that were, you know, purported to, you know, be the end all be all for him. And he's thinking, wow, that'd be perfect. I can set up an operator. And I can walk away and not have to worry about them adjusting tensions and doing all that stuff. And um, I got a phone call <laughs> the other day and um, he said, don't buy, don't, don't believe a word of it. Uh, it's just been a nightmare. So um, just, yeah, that's, that's unfortunate. But he uh, um, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't too pleased with all the, the stuff, the bells and whistles kind of uh, uh, compared to his Baradins that he had sitting there, you know, running. So it was a, uh, uh, it was a, a little bit of bitter pill for him to swallow. Um, let's just put it that way. But yeah, we do we do hear it all the time. Um, you know that this is supposed to be the cat's meow and it's supposed to do everything. Um, but sometimes it can be an Achilles heel too. Um, it gets too complicated, I guess. Well, you we were talking too about you know that all that automation seems very intriguing to somebody new as well because they're like, Oh, I don't have to really learn that much. And if it doesn't work, then you are, you know, up a certain Creek. Yeah. Um, instead of like making an attention adjustment, by like turning a little knob, you got to go into your computer screen and come up with a value or a setting and see if it works instead of just going there and, you know, there's still, I think, an artistic touch to embroidery. So exactly. there's no two doubt. Hands off. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you get, Absolutely. Yeah, there's, you get there's, two hands off, you lose that part. Of, you I've, know, just be able to pull the thread through the eye of the needle and knowing how much it deflects and how much pull you're getting. You can kind of know what the tension is, just, you know, that part of it. You know, that's a human touch. I, I've said this a billion times. There, are, You know, there are machine operators and there, there are embroiderers and that they're mm-hmm. not the same. They definitely aren't aren't the same. You're yeah. an embroiderer knows the machine. They know tensions. They know needles. They know hook timing. They know all this stuff. Now I'm I'm not saying you you can't be successful um, just by being a machine operator, but you're going to be more successful if you if you become an embroiderer. And and I I don't know. I think in I think it's part of society. Everybody wants it right now, and they want it as easy as possible. They just want to push a mm-hmm. button and have the pancake come out the other end instead of mm-hmm. putting the oil in the pan and heating it up. You've never made a pancake. Hmm? <laughs> I said you never made a pancake. Oh, boy, I've made pancakes <laughs> plenty of times. Well, I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> um, you know, I was but, but somebody, yeah, right. somebody right. at the Charlotte show, they were talking to me about all this automatic stuff, and I said, let me put it to you this way. Here's the way I look at it. You can drive a car, right? And this guy was about my age. He said, yeah. And he had a son there with him who, who was going to start running the business. And he was, in, he was like 25. I said, can you drive a manual transmission? He said, yeah. I asked his son, can you? He said, no way. I said, that's the difference. I said, everything's fine when it works automatically, but what happens when it doesn't? What are you, what are you going to do? What's the first thing you're going to do? Do you know how to, yeah. you know what to do manually? No, you don't. And... I'm I'm not totally against it. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I am. I am totally against it. I I, I, I just don't. <laughs> there it is. I just don't think. I just don't think it's. You need to learn the hard way before you go to the easy way. Because if when it breaks and it will, 
mm-hmm. are you going to know what to do? Yeah, when it's not, it when it's not calibration. Working. Yeah. Yeah. And when it's out of calibration and it's not doing it right, you, ha- you have no idea how to fix, you know, like, Hey, I just put a little quarter turn right here and back, you know, back up the tension a little bit. Well, or, uh, the other thing yeah. too, if, if thread were a thousand percent consistent, it would probably work. It's not like ink, you know, ink, yeah. ink is the same, yeah. I guess yeah. all the time. And, you know, <clears throat> and it, you, you take a printer or a copier, the ink that comes out of it is always the same. It shoots well, you know how set. finicky some kinds of thread can be, or absolutely different going to the. And then you put the add the bobbin to it. Correct. Yeah, again, bobbin again, and I'm, and I'm telling changes. you, if there's if there's anything inconsistent these days, it's bobbins. Oh, yeah. Bobbins suck. Bobbin. They absolutely. are horrible. I, yeah. I mean, I, man, yeah. I've sewn for a long time. I've never mm-hmm. seen, and I'll, I'll be first person to say this. I've never seen bobbins as bad as they are now. And, and pick a manufacturer. Mm-hmm. Because I think they're all mm-hmm. done in China now, where they used to be done, you know, in Germany or other places. But you you get a box, and I'm not getting on a soapbox, but I, I guess I will. You get a, and I'm not gonna mention any brands. I'm gonna knock anybody. But you get a box of a well-known brand of bobbins that, that had this cardboard sides. Of, I, I can't. You know this too. How many bobbins do we throw away at a show because you can't get you the, can't you can't get it, get it off the spool? Off the spool yeah. Mm-hmm. You sit there and fight with it. I, I've, I've never seen them this bad. Yeah, and like if I can't get yeah. it out, the machine sure can't get it out. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And and how does the auto tensioning work with with that? I I, I I just don't know. I don't I, think it can. It I don't explodes it can. and catches on fire. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there are there are some benefits to technology and stuff, but it seems like a lot of times they're released before their time. I guess what's that wine? No wine released before it's time or something. <laughs> um, You're but, talking over my head. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes the technology is maybe not as um, as solid as it as it needs to be before it's you know put out onto the market and being sold as a you know you got to have this. Um, so yeah, um, uh, I, I, I guess eventually we'll get closer and closer to it. It seems, you know, it seems like a natural progression, but. Oh, I, 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 I like think, that. yeah, I, I, like I think, part of things. I, I think at some point in time, it'll be, it, it, all machines will have it. We, we'll probably have it too, you know, I, I, mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I hope I'm, I'm retired by then. I don't want to deal with it. Yeah, me too. But, yeah, me too. You know, another Leave thing, it to me. <laughs> you know, uh, Thad and I were out at your customers yeah, a few weeks ago looking at this color reel thing and you know what that is, right? Yeah, uh, where it dyes the thread yeah. um, on demand. Mm-hmm. I Man, know you talk about a lot of moving parts. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, it, that thing. I'm, I'm looking at it, and I, and I will tell you, it, it's pretty amazing. When I look at stuff like this, I'm like, I always say it's really good while it's working. But yeah. what happens when it doesn't work? It's almost, it's like a gimmick mm-hmm. almost. It's like, look at this flashy thing, and then, you know, it, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't see. I don't see where there's a big need for it. I don't. I don't either. I mean, it yeah. it looks pretty cool, but you know, you got to think about the cost of that as well. Well, the only it's thing about thirty thousand ahead <laughs> or something like that. Thirty thirty yeah. thirty three ahead. Yeah. The last yeah. yeah. And, and I'm I'm not knocking that company. It's it's you know I got yeah. to I got to talk to their lead technician over there. Super nice guy. <clears throat> you know, and this thing's been in development for about five or six seven years. I think he kept saying, but. Mm-hmm. You know, version one, version two, version three. And I'm like, well, what about all those people that bought the first five or six versions? And now they're at seven. But that thing has got a ton of moving parts. You know, the machine has no tension on it at all. There's no tension. You take it out of the, out of the top. Well, it's, it's, it's in the, the bottom tensioner, but it's not in the top tensioner. Because you have to set the tensions on the, on the color reel thing itself. Um... So I, 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 I don't know. Um, you got a waste tank on there that when it's full, you got to put in another waste tank, which is quite expensive. You can't just pour that stuff down the drain. Um, you shouldn't. <laughs> no, well, you shouldn't. It, it washes the thread. There's, it's got a dryer, dryer on it that yeah. dries it. I mean, the thread has to be wow. prepped inside of the machine before it gets sprayed with uh, spray tan. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I, I know I sound like an old fogey, an old fart, but. I, I don't know. It just seems to me like everybody does pretty well doing it the simple way. The old-fashioned way, right? But, I mean, there, there's people who want technology. There's people who, right. who, who want all this technology in their, in their car, in their home, in their embroidery machine. Mm-hmm. 
And there's old farts like me who just, man, I just want to keep it simple. When it breaks, I know how to fix it. It's more reliable. It, you know, you can still get parts for it. I, I, I don't know. Sometimes change for the sake of change isn't always the best thing, in my old man's opinion. Yep. Yeah, the, I, I, I have to agree with you. I think about all that technology, and I'll just reference people to the original Terminator. See how that ends. <laughs> the original Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> Skynet's coming for you. Oh, my goodness. So. What, what did you, you got? You anything else? No, I'm good, man. I'm just having a good day. Yeah, we're good. It's Friday. I know. Well. But, yeah. What's the weather like out your way? We're not going to get into that. Oh, man. It's about to be a There's rain. this big system setting off the South Carolina coast. Yeah. That's going to bomb us with rain for three days. Oh, my goodness. We've yeah. got, uh, we got a couple of days of 80 degrees we're looking at out here in pure sunshine. So. Well, I talked to Ellen this morning, and she said, oh, I hope you're going to have a good weekend. I said, it's going to be horrible rain. She said, well, in northern Ohio, it's going to be in the 70s yeah. for the next three days. I'm like, that gone. We're not going to get out of the 60s. No. Which is, which we should, we morning. should be close to 80 this time of year yeah, for us. By the time this comes out, Memorial Day will be over with. And yeah. We'll have survived yeah. the rain, torrential rains. But I don't know. Well, I, uh, I hope we all have continued good selling and throughout the end of the year. I know we get, um, third quarter fourth quarter there's usually big rushes from our you know customers that are doing um the large you know um either 3pl or online retailers you know for the fall holiday season yeah um so it's usually a big push on single heads um a lot at that time so yeah i'm we're keeping my eye on the stock list where we're in a good position on the pro threes which is nice yeah and we we're uh i think japan is going to uh build a few extras for us hopefully that's what I'm hoping. They're so kind. Yeah. We talk nice to them. Yeah. Hey, man, before I let you go, let's have a little bit of fun here. Let me ask you a few questions. Uh-oh. All right. Sure. I'm going to put you sure. on spot. I didn't know about this. Oh, you didn't know okay. about this? Mm-mm. If you were given a time machine, would you go into the future or into the past? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'd go into the future. Would you really? Yeah. God, no. Why? Why would you go into the future? Already you would want to You would want to see? Lived. I already live the past. I want to see what, what, you know, I don't want to miss out on anything. There might be something good out there in the future. But it, I don't know may, what happened in the past. But it may scare yeah. the crap out of you, too. Yeah. yeah that, that's remember that I talked true. about the Terminator? You're going to see yeah, all these yeah. <laughs> all these automatic machines are going to turn into the <laughs> Terminators. <laughs> and they'll destroy everything. Uh, maybe, yeah. maybe there's a little bit of You don't want to go to the future. I'm going back in my time. Time. I'm, I'm going back to Viking <laughs> times, and I'm going to kill everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to go back into cowboy times. I, I like uh, to be a cowboy. You're already living. <laughs> no, Randolph I think it'd be County. cool. I, you know, I always thought, um, when, like, like when Christopher Columbus and all these guys came over here. All those guys. All these guys. <laughs> when they flew over. In their boats. And they landed in Atlanta. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, when when the, when the explorers came, Lewis and Clark and all of them. I would like to go back in that time when there was nothing here. Yeah. And be able to just go yeah. across America. You would immediately walk out of your tent and get mauled by a bear. <laughs> That's all that happened. <laughs> I get shot by, with an arrow by an Indian. Yeah, what a nice day. Thunk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think it'd be cool. Um, well, well, I would want to make sure I was safe. I'm just not saying. You, well, there's no guarantee back then. Well, I know, but <laughs> hey, it's my fantasy. Yeah, you're right. I said I was going to be a bike, <laughs> so that didn't work out either. Next question. I could see you wearing a pair of horns there, Brandon. Oh, yeah. yeah Dude, like I would. Hiking. Yeah, I absolutely would. I know I seem like a nice person, but. That's how you painted your face. Yeah, that only goes so far. Yeah. I have a very violent <laughs> past. All right, let me ask you this, Gary. What, uh, you're on death row. Yeah. What would your last meal be? Oh, my goodness. You know, my mom's Japanese. Mm-hmm. I would want to have uh, an amazing Japanese meal. We had one yesterday. <laughs> authentic, authentic. No, Japanese it's just one thing. I, I, you know that? Yeah, I, that. Yeah, because you know you have you can have Japanese food when you go to a restaurant, but it's just not quite the same as you know maybe as authentic as you get uh, like like in Japan. Yeah. So, yeah. Was but your mom? Should, was I your uh, Was your mom a good cook? 
<clears throat> she was. She was. In fact, I learned to cook hanging out in the kitchen with her because she was short and she could never reach all the spices up in the cabinet. So I would sit up on the ledge and hand her stuff while she was cooking. And that's kind of how I learned to cook, just by proxy, kind of watching her do what she did. That's pretty cool. Um, yesterday, Brandon's birthday was Tuesday. Was Tuesday or Monday? I don't know. I don't, I Happy birthday, Brandon. Oh, thanks. It was the 23rd. Anyway, he, he, he and his younger brother and I, we, we have a tradition that we take each other out for sushi. That's been our thing. We go to a sushi right. place and you get sushi for lunch. So he yep. and Kyle and my nephew went too. So we go to this place. It's called Sushi Kingdom. Now don't don't laugh. Don't laugh. It's 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 it's, it's run by Japanese people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean they're, they're, they're you know they they have real authentic chefs back there. But it's for eighteen dollars for lunch. Wasn't it eighteen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's all you can eat sushi. That's and, a deal. And I'm, yeah. I, it, was, it was very good. I, I'm, very good. First time I went there, when when Kyle, we I, were all kind of hesitant. The first yeah, we time. were hesitant about. It. I'm like, oh, we're all gonna get sick and get uh, get the scurvy <laughs> and all that stuff. And man, that's a, it was our second time there. Mm-hmm. It was really good. Um, wow. We ate two big old plates of sushi. Between, I mean, they, we had a lot of rolls. Yeah. We rolled out of there. That's how much we did roll out of there. But it was really good, though. Oh, my goodness, it was good. You like you like sushi, right? Yeah. I love sushi. Now, Bob, you've probably had really good sushi because you've been to Japan quite yeah. a few times. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, do you notice the difference? Oh, my goodness. It, 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 once, it, yeah. it ruins you because th- yeah. this is this is good here. Um, you yeah. go over there, and it's the freshness it's, of the fish. The, the yeah, fish the next level. is yeah. just melts in your mouth. It literally melts in your mouth, like you know, like the tuna and the salmon, yep. Yep. and and even the shrimp is plumper. Oh, it's yep. I wish everybody yep. who likes sushi could could have it there. But I would like yeah, if to. everybody could, yeah, if everybody that loves sushi could actually have sushi in Japan, yeah. Well, be. and the thing too, and I know you know this, the wasabi in Japan is actual the actual ground root. It's not the paste Correct. that they use here. It's not even grain there, yeah. is it? Oh, I think they put some they, they, they put, put some dye in it. They put mm-hmm. they put dye in it. But well, well, the the root, the wasabi root, does have kind of a almost like a the inside of an avocado yeah. type of oh. color. Yeah, but you know when you when it too. when it hits the but air though, I think it I think green. it turns it turns whitish whitish looking or loses yeah. some of yeah. its color. But but it's it's amazing the flavor. Um, and the, I think sometimes they even grind it like on a shark skin or something like that. You know, the oh, part of goodness. the shark skin if you do it that. Yeah. Well, like it's that. there's 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 two things. It's it's it, of course it's fresh and it's it doesn't it takes a third of what you use here to get the same yeah. heat. But it's got a yeah. sweetness to it. After after you eat it, it's really hot yeah. and then it's real sweet. Mm. It's yeah. man, I wish I could. Well, you probably could find it on Amazon, maybe. I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sure you could. But, you know, they, they grow that. I think they grow it up in the mountains in Japan, and it grows in, like, brooks and streams is where they get yeah. it. Yeah, C- clear water yes. streams. Absolutely and awesome. Absolutely. And it's just, yeah, absolutely the cleanest, clearest, coolest water. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm, yeah, last I should get on the wasabi and sushi. Wow. Well, we've gone a long way from the brewery. Mm. This, well, is, you know, this is what happens. Yeah, this we what we, happens. we are tangent. We get on tangents all the time. <laughs> Last question. We'll let you have your day back. Um, sure. What superpower? Any superpower? Well, which one would you like to have? Oh, X-ray super. vision. Yeah. Mind reading. Don't say X-ray Ooh, vision. That one. Mind yeah, reading. Yeah, mind reading. Would you yeah. really? You That's you might regret yeah, that, that immediately. Cool. I don't know, man. You wouldn't be married very long. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> That's what I was thinking. It'd be like <laughs> mind reading. Uh, Why is she thinking about yeah. Jason Momoa all the time? <laughs> no, no, X, X-ray vision. You yeah, don't want that one either. No, no. You will get me uh, too. <laughs> I'd like to be invisible. Oh, how, oh! You know what? I'd actually like to take away from that. That would be. I, I just think it'd be cool. Fly. Fly. You know, that it's would be almost is, like mind reading. Flight, yeah. yeah. I, I think is flying. flying part of a superpower. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's a, if, if, if you can't do it now, me. it's a superpower. Yeah, yeah. Because I have dreams about flying, which is weird. Like I can, like fly. So uh, yeah, fly. Okay. You do. Fly. Okay, that's that. That would be a good one. I could go along with that. There we go. Yeah, the, it's a the invisible. Bit yeah, I. I be yeah, cool I, I'll let my wife have her private thoughts. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You got to think about it before you. That's a big question to answer. <laughs> yeah. so that's true. But, but yeah, flying, mind. that would be a good one. Yeah, I'd like to fly. How, how is your, your wife doing okay? Susan doing all right? Susan's doing great. She's doing the Murph today. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so she's not going to be doing all right in about an hour. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So last Friday when she got back, uh, yeah, because she just did the half one. Um, but anyways, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how she is. Uh, don't today. they do? They uh, she could break it up. <laughs> don't they do the weighted vest on that too? Some sometimes. Yeah, some guys said. Oh, I was just talking to a friend of mine down in California. He did a twenty pound vest, and he said. Um, he would have finished in 45 minutes, except for he wore the 20 pound vest. It took him <laughs> wow. two hours because he had to do 100 pull ups. And with the vest on. Doing the, yeah. yeah, with the vest. And he wasn't doing the kipping, you know, the, oh, the yeah. CrossFit style. The he was doing the, the, the straight, straight up and down one. And yeah, he said if it wasn't for that, he goes, he would have been done in 45 minutes. <laughs> it took him two hours to knock out 100 pull ups. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not, laughing. I'm not laughing at him. I couldn't even do it. No. Yeah, he he hit the wall there. So anyway, yeah, it'll be interesting to see my my wife how she. Uh, that's why she asked me to make sure. That I, I think I got her. My job for this weekend is make sure the hot tub gets cleaned and <laughs> go, I think she's going to be soaking. So. Yeah, have the Epsom salts ready. Well, yeah, I hope she does. Uh, hope she does well. Yeah, she's amazing. You know, she's well into her sixties, and she's. Uh, I, I got to tell you, she's. She, I don't know how she does it. She'll even like when she works out, you know, three times a week mm -hmm. on Friday, she'll spend an hour after the Friday workout doing boxing. Yeah. And then she ends all of her workouts by climbing the rope, you know, the big rope that goes yeah. up to the rope mm -hmm. and back down. She'll climb, she'll climb that. And I'm like, that's pretty darn good for somebody in their mid sixties. Like, I'll be on the couch when you need me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can, you know, can you hand me the remote? I can't get up. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, well, hi, buddy. I was a little afraid. I was, you know, uh, I know everybody's sure like so hesitant about it. It's I'm just, like, it's, it's just, just three, three friends yeah. having a conversation. Oh That's all it is. But I get it. I thought know. it was going to be like a root canal or something. No, like man, that. it's. it's <laughs> uh, I, no, I'm just kidding. We want to make you look I cool and fun. hip, and you know. Yeah. All that stuff. I knew it was going to be going to be fun. Yeah, you know, it's tough because we don't get to talk. Uh, you know. And, and BS a little bit because it's usually you know our busy, days are so busy. It's, yeah, you know, exactly. Hey Bob, can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do that? And yeah. I think, thank you. Bye. You know. Thank yeah, you it's stuff. and yeah. I, you know it's I, I we're so busy now. It's it, I kind of miss talking to you guys. Um, Except for me, right? <laughs> uh, I don't miss talking to you. <laughs> yeah. So well, anyway, I I, I hope uh, I hope you guys have a good weekend and uh, and uh, you know I hope the the industry stays. Um, solid like it is now and, and um you know that we don't people don't get too uh too worried about like you know, the doom and gloom stuff but it it seems like it's uh it's it's healthy right now uh, i think things will be, be i think things now. will be fine i just but i think we'll be okay yeah i think we'll okay. keeping a po positive attitude is a good thing i, I think things are going to yeah. be good yeah absolutely so all, all right. right have a good rest of your all year. right buddy uh and, happy uh, happy uh care. memorial day tell uh tell your wife we said howdy and, yeah, uh, yeah, she'll, she'll come looking into the house here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right, buddy. We Anyhow. appreciate you, buddy. All right, guys. We'll talk. Thanks, yeah, Gary. Same here. Good talking to y'all. All, All right. right. See you. Bye. All right. All right. Bye. Mr. Gary. Yeah. Good talking to him. That was good. Yeah. Gary, been around a long time, man. I'm, it's, it's, uh. Um, That's why I said, um, I was serious. Like, you know, every time I, like, saw any pictures of him, I was like, what? He looks like he's. Younger than, yeah. What what he is when you well, tell me? Well, I mean, he's you know his mom, his mom was Japanese. Yeah. And I, I don't think they age. They don't age. Like I age like fruit. <laughs> me too. Like, I'm like an avocado. I'm good for like three or four days. Yes. And then as soon as you cut me open, I'm, I'm gonna turn brown. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm mushy and I got a big nut inside of me. <laughs> <laughs> Pump the brakes on that. One. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't take it. Don't. I'm not. That didn't come out right. Well, yeah, it did too. Okay. It's not. On. It's not X-rated. It's it's. You know, what was your superpower? What would mine be? Did you say? Yeah, invisible. Oh, that's right. Also creepy. I, no, no, I think it'd be cool, man. You could get all kinds of trouble, and never get caught. That is true. You could rob a bank, and nobody would know. I would just I, invincibility would be the way to go for me. Invincibility. Mm -hmm. Here's what I would do. You mean <clears throat> you mean not being not being able to be killed? Yeah, that's invincibility. Not. Invisibility. I don't. Want, I don't want to live that long. No, you could you would have the power to 
into yourself. But nobody else could. So what I would do, I would use that superpower, go back to the first question, go back to the Viking times, and be the ruler of everybody for eternity. That's dark, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just thinking if you went back, like I wanted to be a cowboy, but I would miss sushi. You also can't ride a horse. Yeah, I ride a horse. You can't ride a motorcycle. <laughs> I, I, I can't. You have hip dysplasia like a dog. <laughs> I just can't ride it very long. Yeah. I, you know, I would have to take breaks off of Trigger. Me and Trigger would have to just trigger. take a lot of breaks. Yeah. Yeah. I would call my horse Lightning. I got the name picked out. I, I've had dreams about this. Do you have the time out. machine picked out, though? That's the first no. step. No, I've been waiting for Amazon to put them on sale. <laughs> now, I don't have Prime, so I have to pay shipping. I can get that. I can get it for you. Well, I need to, I need to think. Then what was your death row meal? My mom's fried chicken. Mm, that's a good choice. Mom's fried chicken, cornbread. Pentos? Maybe my mother-in-law's banana pudding. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to eat much of it, though, because I'm kind of watching my weight. You would be. Of course, if you're dying. That's what I'm saying. A few hours later, you'd be dead. What else? Then what would be your method of execution? I think lethal lethal injection. Injection. Like they do now? Yeah. I think I do. Is that what they do? They don't kill anybody anymore. Ooh. Just go to sleep. Uh, You know, I wouldn't want to be electrocuted. Of course, of course, if you were electrocuted, here's the thing. Maybe electrocution, and I'll tell you why. I think this is still true. You're going to uh, regret this. If they electrocute you and something happens that, that it doesn't take, you go free. I saw that in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? They tried to electrocute this guy like three times and they're like, well, I let him go. It was um, the Green Mile. <laughs> I was, was going to say, yeah, based on the true story, the Green Mile. Yeah. Man, that movie's sad. Yeah, I cried. Bull. That was a good movie. Yeah. Tom, old Tom Hanks. Yeah, and uh, what's it, Michael Clark Duncan. He, he did die. Yeah. Not by he, electrocution, no. No, no, he didn't. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want to hang in with suck. Oof. Yeah, I don't want to talk about this anymore. You remember the, you remember, uh, the Battle of Buster Scruggs? Remember when they're all getting hanged? It's not hung, it's hanged. Mm-hmm. And what's his name? He says, is this your first time? Yeah. <laughs> remember, remember he gets... He gets loose, doesn't he? No, the uh, first time he gets loose. Right. So the second time they capture him, and he's thinking, oh, I've got this. I got loose. And then it all goes black. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that is a very weird movie. It's good, though. It's, but it's, it's one of those that, you, it, it, if it's on, it's like Shawshank Redemption. What's well, always on Netflix. But when it's on, you kind of have to watch it because it's just... Was that ever on TV or... That no, was never in the theaters. No, it wasn't on TV. I don't, no, How have no, you no. watched it? I think Kyle had it. <laughs> on laser disc? <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you mean he had it? You know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to put this on YouTube. <laughs> no, I don't. I t- that's how. Okay. It, it was so good, man. I, it, it, it is. Was, it's it, was, good. it was so weird. Was that the Coen Brothers? Mm, I think so. Yeah, yeah, pretty sure. Well, their stuff's weird anyway. Did they do No Country for Old Man? I don't. That's no. That's, I love that movie. And it is so dark and yeah. murderous and killing. What's, it, what's and his name? The bad guy. Yeah. Oh, he's like it's uh, he's a like a uh, Spanish Italian or something. I don't know what he is. <laughs> Mexican Italian. <laughs> I don't know what he is. He's got a. He's got that like weird haircut. Mm-hmm. It's a bowl cut. He looks like he should have been dumb. That that scene. <laughs> Where Woody Harrelson and him are in that in the room. office when they're in his and office, and they're sitting in that chair, and he's got the gun laying there, and Woody Harrelson knows, dude, Time's I'm, up. I'm, 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 I'm cooked. Yeah, he says, "I've got fifty thousand dollars." I can. The guy's like, "You're going to die." Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I love it. <clears throat> I love it. Well, I like those weird movies. I don't know why. I just because everything else is predictable. Predictable. This you didn't know where these movies were going. That that Buster Scruggs movie was weird as all get out. It, it was like really. four like vignettes. Yeah, it's, it's, di- yeah, it's yeah, different. Four separate four stories. <clears throat> and the music, you know, the music's cool. Mo- the music was really good. Yeah, I remember uh, that's the first scene or the first, what'd you call it, vignette? Yeah, you know, it's like a little mini movie. 
Remember, he gets shot in the shootout, and he's like flying above. Yeah, that's what I was getting to say. Like, he was yeah. singing while he was like, like his like little angel flying heaven. away. I'm glad he went to heaven. Mm-hmm. He had wings. He was a sharpshooter. Yeah. Anyway, check that movie out if you haven't. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, you might. You might. Don't you watch might, it. Don't watch it like with it. your. Don't watch it with your kids. Yeah, not it's, recommended. It's, it's, it's not. It's, it's not a Disney movie. It's very weird. All right. Well, enough of that stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do y'all want to die? Put it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. If you want to put down um, what, what your, your superpower, superpower is, your let us know what your meal. superpower is. Yeah. If, you, if you're listening to this, just all you have to all you have to say you don't even have to just say flying. Gary wants to fly. I want to be invisible. You want to be invincible. Mm-hmm. Just one word. Put in the comments what your superpower would be. That's the challenge. <clears throat> All right. Well, we hope that you had a happy Memorial Day. Yes. Um, because this will come out on Wednesday. And Number thank one. you thank you to our veterans yeah. and all of those folks that gave the ultimate satis- uh, sacrifice. <laughs> Satisfaction. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, uh, you know, we all have cookouts and it's a day off and... You know, a lot of times we forget what it's all about. Just take a few minutes, you know, if you see a vet. Um, I made a conscious effort, and I usually do. Like, I, I'm, but, you know, I've been doing my daily walks. I have the thing over at Creekside, and I spent some time over there this morning and yesterday morning. It's just pretty cool. I just they got wanna... a very, our, our little town, <clears throat> I know it's, it it's, well, it's the world headquarters of uh, Baird and uh, all over the world. The headquarters. <laughs> I said yeah. that, didn't I? Yeah. But uh, we do some cool things in this little town. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah. 11,000 people here. I love where I live. Love this place. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. It is It is our home. Although know. the crime has gone through the roof, as we discussed yeah. last month. Well, podcast. squirrel crime, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they quit killing the squirrels. But it's a good place to live. Brandon Kyle grew up here, uh, the boys. It just It's just awesome. But, man, they do this really nice. Um, all of the, the veterans that have lost their lives... And that were from Archdale Trinity area. They put a flag out here next to the library, and it. Um, other other towns do this too, but they leave they leave it up for several days for people to go out and see, and they do a little dedication to all the people that have that have died, the veterans that have died, and they don't have to do that, you know. Um, I, I just it makes you proud to be part of, part of a little town that would do something like that. Mm-hmm. That's so pretty cool. It, was, it really is. Yeah. So. Thank you to all those people, and yeah, we um, have your cookouts and stuff too. But yeah, I would say take some time and reflect on that. Please that do a deep thought of the day. <clears throat> That's all I got. That's deep enough. Yeah, That's pretty deep. All righty. Well, we'll uh, hopefully see you guys on the next episode. Yeah. Thanks again. Thanks again uh, to Gary for joining yep. us. It was a lot of fun. It was fun, and we'll uh, we'll try to continue this little series and get some of these other cowards on. Yeah, I don't know why they don't want... I mean, are they afraid of us? They're going to be afraid of me if they don't answer an email because I have a very particular set of skills. Well, plus you were probably a Viking in a former life. I don't know about that. And I was a cowboy. I was probably the cook. (laughs) (laughs) The camp chef. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Um, See you guys on the next episode. Go like, subscribe, leave a comment. Thank you Um, for listening. And share it if you would. Get your telephone. Scam likely. He's a, he calls all the time. All right, we'll see you guys on the next one. Appreciate you. Adios. Adios.